Okay, the purpose of this video is to uh, share how to move our shapes, our cross-section shapes. There's uh, some drawing boundaries that's been placed out here. and You can see them all along there. Um, you can see them in the 2D, and you can also see them in the 3D. And I'll, I'm looking at these shapes, and if I zoom in, I can see that we're real close on this right side of the alignment. The alignment runs north to south. You can see that there's a couple of sections here that really I need to, you know, just move those shapes just a little bit to the right, which would be the left on the screen, so that I can encompass more. Now, if I go back out, if I go out and look at some of these, you know, cross-section models, like the drawing model for section 614, which would be this one, 614 plus 00, zero. I go out to that one and I look at it. You can see on the far right, you know, we got our stuff. Our ditch ends up here on this offset of 8540. So we've got about 40 feet to, to move this shape, 30 to 40 feet. Over here, you can see on the right side that, that last fill slope coming in, back slope coming in is real close to the edge of the, the grid. So there might be some times where you want to shift this. There might be some other reason why you want to shift it. But this that's what this video is going to be all about, is shifting the whole sh uh, shape. Now, cross-sections are dynamic in the means that if we went out and we changed our profile, the uh, geometry would update. Or if we changed the corridor and changed the template drop, changed out what we're using in here, maybe instead of shoulders, we put curb and gutter in our template. We come back. And the cross sections, they're dynamic. It shows what's in the corridors. Okay, so that's a cool thing. But it's not dynamic when it involves moving those shapes. If we move the shape to the right, maybe 30 feet, if we move it to the right 30 feet, the geometry will move and the shape will move that outlines the whole port. But the annotation stays here. Well, just like the other one, when I change my profile or anything, I'd have to remove the annotation and then reapply annotation. Well, if anything's happening to the corridor or the profile, it'll reproduce the annotations correctly. But if that shape moves, the annotations go back to where they belong. They stay right in this area. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to get around all that. So we're going to go to multi-model views. So we look at what we've got here. There's a couple things that this entails, okay? First, you've got um, under the models windows, you can see that we've got all these different cross-section models out here, all sheets and all different kinds of drawing models. And we'll come back to this in a minute. Okay. But I want to shift these three sh shapes. I've got one here, here, and here. I want to I want to shift those. So what I have to do, or what I need to do, is go to the workflow and change it to drawing. I want to bring up the MicroStation AccuDraw. So I want to go to my drawing aids, and I'm going to enable AccuDraw. This little toggle AccuDraw button. And right now I'm in the 2D window. Now if I tried to move these shapes, like I want to move it just along the X, I just want to move it... Um, along that axis and not move on the Y or the Z. So what would have been nice is if we could just use it here in the 2D and move these shapes, but you can't. These shapes are referenced in from this 3D window. So we need to go over to the 3D window, make it active, and we'll get our Z depth. We'll get all of our three different uh, directions here. So once we've got that, the other thing that we need to do is we have to change a setting. And to get to the AccuDraw settings, it's, it's again in that drawing workflow and it's this little button down here with all the AccuDraw well, settings. We'll click on that. And what we need to do is turn on this context sensitivity. We usually leave it off but for this when we use our rotate quick or rotate on element along element it won't work unless it's checked on. It's a bug. They know about it. They're going to get it fixed. But at this point in time it's not fixed, so you have to toggle that on. The next thing we want to do is use a move tool to move that shape. So I'm going to go back up to the Home tab and slide on down to the Move command under the Manipulate Tools. 
Okay, so I'll grab the move. And there's three shapes I want to move. This one, this one, and this one. I'll grab the first one, which is that 614. And once I select it, you can see we've got AccuDraw up and running. And we need it to honor that rotate element. So I'm going to key in RE on my keyboard and just hover over that shape. And you see what it does. The shape or the compass has rotated to the front of that shape. And that's what we want. Then all you have to do is left click on it to accept that compass rotation. Now you can get on that X axis and tell it to move. I think I was going to move it about 30 feet. 25 would be fine. So we'll just key in, and you can see it's a minus up there, so I'm going to key in minus 25 and hit the enter key, and it moves that shape. Okay, 25 foot. i still got plenty of room on the left, got more room on the right now. I'll do the same thing with this uh, 615 plus 00 station. So I'll grab it. Again, you have to hit RE to rotate that. Hover over the shape that you're trying to rotate along that element, and then accept it. And then if you can get to your 25 offset, like I have now, you can see in the AccuDraw or dialog, minus 25 feet, I can just simply left click, and it'll move it that 25 foot to the left for us. And then I'll do the last one as well. So I'll select it. Again, I need to hit the RE key. RE, hover over that shape. The compass rotates. I'm good to go. I select it want that minus 25 to match the rest of them and you could change it maybe you don't need 25 maybe 20 on this one and let's do 20 minus 20 looks like we're back a little further so you can see these shapes have been moved and they're going to show exactly what we want okay so once we've done that part i'm going to hit the f4 key i'm going to uncheck my contact sensitivity i'm done with this accuDraw and close it i'm actually done with accuDraw as well and then I will go and let's open up 614 and see what it looks like. So again, we moved our shape. Let's see how, how it acts. We'll go to 614, that model. You can see the shape has moved, the geometry has moved, but the annotation did not. So like I was saying before, it's dynamic in a lot of ways, but this part of it isn't. So let's go ahead and remove that stuff. So I'm going to go to my workflow and change it to open roads modeling. I'm going to go out to the drawing production tab. I want to remove the model annotation. So I'm just going to do it for this one model. So I'll remove model annotation. Uh, all models? No, just this one. And when I delete it, okay, it looks good. And this is what we want to do. We want it to be able to move that shape so we can encompass more of our project. And you can see that last point is going to be perfect. It's pretty much centered on here. But now we need to annotate it again. So if we go back up to our model annotation tools and select that annotate model, and we say, no, we don't want all of them because we only removed it on one. We don't want to double up annotations on everything. So we'll say no. But we have to pick one. And this says uh, cross section annotation with grid. If that's okay, then I'll go with it. And, and that's fine. I'll just go ahead and left click and take that one with the grid and populate it. And here's what happens. I'll select it. None of the annotation matches that where that geometry has moved to. All the annotation stays where it once was. It all needs to be shifted. Okay, so we got to fix that. This is this is an issue, and the only way we can fix it is to rerun our cross sections. So let me show you how to do that. So I'll go back to my multi-model views. Okay, so I've got my shapes out here, and I've got. Uh, everything going. I'm good to go, but I need to remove the cross-section models so I can create new ones. If I was to go out and rerun these uh, by going to the name boundary manager and rerunning these, it wouldn't. It would put more shapes out there, and it would have different. The stationing would be all jacked. So let's let's go out and fix this. First thing I want to do is remove all these created models that I have in here. All these drawing models and sheet models. I'm going to get rid of those. So if I go to the Home tab, there is a Models option. We'll select that. And I'm going to delete everything in there 
except for the default and the default 3D. I'm getting rid of all the cross-section models, whether it's a drawing model or a sheet model. I'm getting rid of them all. <clears throat> it's going to ask me if I want to do it. I do want to do it. And it's going to check in this DGN work set file. We really don't take advantage of that right at, at this point in time, but we'll go ahead and check it in. And we should be down to a default default 3D. I'll close that out. And then the next thing we want to do that's a, kind of an important thing is we're going to go to our view attributes pull down and I want to get to that save view manager. And that is down here in the view setup next to the save view off to the right of the apply options there is an open save views dialog. I'm going to open that up. What happens is when we run cross sections, it creates a save view for each one of the stations that we happen to place a cross section uh, name boundary at. So I need to remove these or else if I don't and I run it, you're going to get the very first occurrence, which is 610 plus 00, zero and then it'll give me a 0 .01 and then 0 .02. So they'll all be named 610 and navigating through that mess would be horrible. So right now what we want to do is we want to select them all. And I use the shift key. I selected the first one, held the shift key, selected the rest of them, and just hit delete save view. And they're gone. My shapes are still here. I'm good to go with that. They're still name boundaries are still out there. I've just removed all the functionality of the models and the names so that when we recreate these um cross-section models, the naming will go right along with the stationing, and that's that's what we want for us to be able to easily navigate through one model to the other. So, to do that, what I like to always do also is run the uh, file tools. I like to compress the file to get rid of <clears throat> any of that other stuff. Now, when you compress it, you can see what happens. I lose my 3D window, so that's all right. I'll just come back over to my 2D window, hit, hit the F6 key, and I've got my windows back. Now, of course, when you recreate that window, your transparency has disappeared, so you got to reapply that transparency in your view attributes, and now I can see through my shapes again. So, <clears throat> I'm ready to run my, my uh, cross sections. I need to go to the Drawing Productions tab, Name Boundaries, a manager and in here you can see that we do have some cross-section groups it's the route 54 we still have all our different uh, shapes out there we just happen to have moved three of them to make it fit within our sheets the geometry you do want to turn this one on show the create uh, drawing dialogues if not it's going to create your your models each one of them your sheet and your drawing model and you're not going to have any annotation you'd have to annotate it later but I'd like to do it now on the fly, so I'm going to turn this on. And I can go back and select Route 54, and I can either right-click on it, or else I can hit this icon up here, Create Cross-Section Drawing. Either way, um, I tend to right-click on everything, so I'll do that. Create Cross-Section Drawing. <clears throat> it's going to bring up our Create Drawing dialog. And again, this is where we can annotate the group, or pick the annotation group. And for this, I'll just go ahead and do annotation without grid. <clears throat> and it's going to open to the sheet model again if this is checked on. So I'm okay with that. I'll just let it run. <clears throat> so what it's doing now is it's going out and it's recutting these shapes or these cross section models. And it's using the shape that's out there and whether it's shifted or not. So it should, or where, where it has been shifted. So it should honor what we did to it. We moved that shape. It should show us exactly that. It should be labeled correctly. <clears throat> Opens this up to our first occurrence, which I'm going to go ahead and close the name boundary manager. But let's go to that 614 and look at it. 614 drawing model. Remember, a drawing model doesn't have sheet behind it. So I'll hit 614. And you can see that the cross section has shifted. The shape is shifted. And the annotations honor that shift in that shape. And that's what we want. So if we now go to the 615, you can see it shifted as well. And it was shifted that 30 feet as well. And then 616 plus 00, it was shifted 
just 20, 25 feet, I believe, I used on that one. So you can see how it's honored that it fits in there. And if I go to 617, the shape's where it was when we first started. It's offset 140 to the left, 140 to the right. So it's fit perfectly. And you can look at your sheet models as well to see how they turned out. And you can see they, they fit perfectly. And even if I go to 616 to show, um, yeah, I needed the other one. Uh, was 614. You can see it's 614 was shifted 30 uh, 30 feet and then 25 feet on 615. That right, was 16. Anyway, you can see the shifts and I'll go to 616, which would be this one. And you can see that one was 25. So it's shifted and everything's honored. It looks good. Everything looks right. So um, that is how you go ahead and move these shapes. I mean, there's some hoops to jump through. Again, you'll need AccuDraw, MicroStation AccuDraw turned on, uh, settings in there, the contact sensitivity check on. <clears throat> you're rotating about the element of these shapes, and you're just bumping it however uh, much you need to bump it to get it to, to move. And then you'll go back, you'll remove the models, you'll remove um, the view, the save view, that is important. Again, you can see it's recreated those save views by the stationing that we had. So, and that should do it for this.